Ha ha. What's up, people? I'm here. It's your boy, Sir Sturdy. And it's time. Yes, it is that time for Horror Sir Sturdy presents Sturdy Reviews. The apology. The apology. Just got finished watching this movie not too long ago. Had a nice little watch party for it. The wife was up here watching it with me. And we really both enjoyed the movie. I can definitely say that. We really both enjoyed the movie. And this is the first watch party of the year. This is the first... Technically, it's the first movie review of the year. Not on the actual podcast, but you guys know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> and it's exciting. And it's the first movie of the year that I watched, that we watched. Well, that we watched together. I don't know if she watched any of the movie since the year started, but I know this is my first one. And honestly, not a bad way to kick off the year. Not a bad way at all to kick off the year. I'm happy I started with this one. And I actually... It's on Shutter, and it's on Shutter's class of 2022. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do sturdy reviews. I'm gonna knock some movies out, and whatever movies are on the podcast wheel or already reviewed from the podcast from last year, like I see Christmas Bloody Christmas is on there, which I highly recommend. But besides the point, but I'm gonna go through these films and review all these films on this list for you guys, as long as again they're not already going to be reviewed on the podcast or they've already been reviewed. Other than that, I'm just going to pull them off and review them and pull off some other fun, fun lists with other, you know, with other apps. I'll just work on a specific app here and there. Maybe that's how I'll go through some movies besides when newer movies come out. But yeah, so back to this, the apology. <clears throat> and it starts out kind of slow, kind of a slow burn. Basically, you have a mother who's a recovering alcoholic and... Her daughter's been missing for 20 years. Her daughter disappeared 20 years ago. And just so happens this year, she's actually going to get like, um, for the first time in years, you know, have a Christmas celebration at her house with the family and all that other good stuff. But uh, she gets an unexpected visitor on Christmas Eve. Please, Chris. Yeah, she gets an unexpected visitor on, visitor on Christmas Eve and ends up being her ex-brother-in-law. And boy, does he come bearing some gifts. Boy, does he come bearing some fucking gifts. And at first it starts out, you know, just jumping around, but just get to the nitty gritty. When he gets there, it's all you know, how they had, like, those two basically were messing around behind their spouse's back and behind her sister's back. They didn't show up, but they just kind of, you know, they just kind of briefly brushed up on it. And how they were kind of in love with each other. And then it just got deeper and deeper into him finally admitting to her after a while that he raped and murdered her daughter. At first he said he had sex with her and accidentally killed her. Like it was an accident. I kept saying it was an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. And all this other shit. And it just like... It was crazy because the way the buildup was... And the way it was going on, you know, this again, after you find all this shit out is this whole time. Oh, well, sorry. Before before he admits this, you know, they're talking whatever. He brings that up about how she's missing and what she would do if she found out who killed her daughter. And at first she was, you know, she was saying how she would just call the police, you know, let the law handle it. And he was talking about, oh, no, you should torture the person. If you ever found the person, I would torture him. Just, just pretty much saying, you know, what she what. He feels she should do and maybe what he would do and maybe what he wanted done. And you'll see why. Because, again, like I just told you guys a few minutes ago, he's the one who murdered right their daughter. And the crazy thing was, was like he wanted her to kill him. I've never seen that in a movie before. And it was an interesting take on it. It was a really interesting take on it. And you can kind of see why. In a sick, twisted way, you can see why. Because it's like... In his mind, he's like, okay, if someone did this to my child, because he did have a daughter who was around her daughter's age, which they were cousins, because you could understand why they were cousins. That's his niece. That's uh, his uh, ex-wife's sister, which they had a child together. So, you know, just to explain that just in case. <laughs> but and then, of course, they're close, and which we all have cousins out there. Even siblings, you consider you can consider your cousins siblings. You can consider family members friends in a sense. In a sense, you can. I feel like you can. So you can consider fam friends family. And yeah, it's much like, yeah, they're the best friends. I said a third, and so it's like 
he did that to, you know, again, murder, raped or whatever. He picked her up. She was walking from school or something. She was walking from some activity or school or something, and he picked her up from there. And it was just, I'm just like, wow. Like, the whole time, once you found that out, once you just, once they told us this, once you found it out, I was just like, this movie's called The Apology for a reason. I'm hoping for some torture and shit like that, which you got here and there, not as much as I was hoping for and expecting. But um, nostalgia, man, comes in, into key in this movie, which I love. So the daughter, she used to love to, like, sing and record. And she was never confident enough to sing, like, in public or, like, record multiple tapes. She would always just record on one tape and just record over and over and over and over. She had this little little boom box that you could just, you know, you, we've all had them growing up. You just hit record on, you could sing, whatever, sing, rap, whatever, whatever, just talk, anything. And that's what she would do. And so, again, I'm jumping around. So there's a part in the movie where, which, how does she get him tied up? So she ties the guy up. She ties the guy up. She knocks him out somehow. I forgot how exactly, but she ties him up in like a chair or something. And she takes his gun. She shoots him. She ends up shooting him in the leg. I don't think she really meant to. But uh, that's when he was kind of telling her the story, but he was lying to her at first. He was lying to her at first, like with the way he was telling it and what happened in it. And then, you know, there's stuff goes on later on where she gets him down again. She traps him again, fucks him up. Her and her friends fuck him up. Some other lady. And I'm just like, this is, this is what I was hoping for. Again, I was hoping for it to be more torturous, but it wasn't that type of movie. It was. And, and the reason why it wasn't that type of movie is because the guy he didn't necessarily want to be tortured, but he wanted to be killed. And for him, the way it was, the way it came out for me was like, I don't know if you'd call it suicide by revenge. And sorry if that word's triggering to you. I'm just saying just by the way the movie went, but, uh, and, or like not even revenge. On, Cause it wouldn't be revenge on his part. Cause you know, people say that same word by cop. So it's like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, by, I don't know, by victim? Maybe? Either way. Either way. I don't want to stay on that too long. But it's, it, it, either way, it would be giving him the easy way out where he doesn't have to feel it, think about it, or nothing anymore. Because he was talking about how since then, since that night, he's been having panic attacks. And he obviously wants to escape those panic attacks. And... I guess in his mind, he feels, okay, so I can escape these panic attacks. That can also make her feel better in a sense because they have these feelings together in a sick, weird, stupid, twisted way. But also kind of still be in control of the situation, like controlling of it in a sense of, okay, now he, because he, in my mind is like, okay, so he did this to her daughter, right? Did all that horrible stuff to her daughter. Now, like most parents would feel. Or most people would feel if there's someone that you care about that someone harms someone that you care about. Let's not even put, let's just put it on an imaginary someone that's not even in your family, but an imaginary someone that's not even existing. Because I want to put that kind of energy out there on anybody. So that imaginary person, that imaginary being that does not exist, will never exist because it's just imaginary. You know, you do your thing for that is what I'm getting at. And he was expecting her to do that. She did to an extent, but she still wanted to get him locked up because it's like, okay, now you're going to prison. Now you have to live with this. And not only that, people will know about that in prison and they're not going to take too kindly to that. And you're going to get what you deserve. You're going to get what's coming to you. But the overall, I mean, um, I could see why it would be a scary movie because obviously the most terrifying situation in the world would be something, again, that imaginary being happening to that imaginary being. I just, again, I just don't want to put that negative energy out there. And, yeah, you don't want that. Nobody wants that shit. Nobody wants that shit. And you'll do anything and whatever to get that, not only get that back, but also to... You guys know where I'm going with that. <laughs> but, um, but, um... With that said, though, this, 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 was, this was really... It was a good movie. It was honestly... Quality-wise, movie-wise, I mean... A good way to start the year. Not story-wise, not tone-wise. You know what I mean? Not energy-wise with the film. But I mean, just as far as how the story was told. It was a good movie. And I do recommend it. Um, 
I'm hoping <laughs> I start the year and end the year on some good movies. Um, I will say with the past couple movies that we reviewed with, what was it, for Thursday, 13 Slaves Till Christmas, I believe, which was good overall. I believe I gave it a 7. And um, the movies we did on Popcorn and Pints last, that last episode of 2022, those are some fun movies as well. Naughty Christmas and uh, I forgot the other one. Sausage Party. Yes. So, yeah, not necessarily the greatest movies, especially with Sausage Party, but they were fun at least. So, yeah. And I'm setting the tone with a good movie this year. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm setting the tone with a good movie this year as far as on the first review of the year, as far as the first watch of the year and all that stuff. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm even going to try to do a movie list this year, people. I'm going to try. I may even go back and watch, you know, go back through the podcast at least and watch parties and add those to the list of 2022 But the 2023 list. I'm going to try my best, try my best for every movie. I watch horror movie. I watch, put it on the horror movie list, non horror, put it on the non horror list. And then all together, put it on that list. You guys get what I'm saying. And yeah, <laughs> so far I'm one for one, but we'll see what happens. And I know you guys are waiting for me to give you guys my review for this. So Honestly, overall, even though it didn't give me the gore I wanted to or I wanted it to get from this just because of, I mean, what the fuck happened in it with the guy with the story and shit, um, it wasn't really needed. And you, again, with the story of why it wasn't needed and why she didn't do it because it's, again, she wanted, he wanted to be killed, not necessarily tortured, but he wanted to be killed. And I even thought maybe she was going to torture. What she did, he did get fucked up. He get beat up because of what he did. And it was more of like retaliation. But I've thought at the end, I thought at one point it was going to be like torture to the brink of death. Just like fucking him up bad. And then calling the police and just saying, here, this is, we got him here. We had to get him down, tie him down, do this, that, and a third. Here's his confession. Because again, going back to that boom box thing I was telling you guys about. So the mother records over. That was the last tape she had of her daughter's voice singing. And she recorded over that, which it was one of those things where it's like the person that passed on would want, again, let's go to that imaginary being, would want you to do that. Like, if that's going to be the thing that not only solves that mystery of over how, I don't care if it's 20 seconds, a 20 second mystery or, you know what I mean? Or 20 years, just to throw something like that out there. Um... You know what I mean? That you'd want them to kind of do that to kind of get this person locked up or whatever, but hopefully set set them their feeling. You know, help them heal more. It's gonna take a long time. Don't get me wrong. Cause there's fresh wounds open, but it's also some things closed. I would assume. So hopefully it helped them with that. But uh, I again going with her the way she went. I can also see the way of what you wanted to see in the movie and what you think you would do in that situation, which is. Yeah, the torturous violence, boom, you know. But uh, with that said, though, again, like I said, I didn't need it for this movie, and you kind of said why, or you seen why with her. So just the way she was acting, she wasn't that type of person. She didn't want to be that type of person. She didn't want to be like him. She didn't want to give him any power. She told, she and, oh, one thing she told him, because he was like, you said you were going to kill me, and she was like, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you shit. And she was so fucking right with that. Because it was she, they kind of made a deal. They kind of negotiated. He was trying to make a deal. Like, okay, I will tell you what happened, and then you kill me right after. I'll give you the gun back. Because there was they had a little struggle at some points. But um, yeah. So with that said, <laughs> after that long winded thing, um, hmm, I'm gonna give this movie an. I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm going to give it an 8. It was a really good movie. It was a really good movie. Um, Again, I, I recommend it. I do recommend it. And, yeah. It's it's on that class of 2022. Again, it's on that class of 2022 for Shudder. So, you should definitely... I think you should, guys should check it out. I'm going to go through every movie so you don't have to. And it's the first episode of 30 Reviews. Hey. You may get some holiday shit mixed in here. I may I may jump into those if I don't save them for later on this Christmas. I may jump into a few of those just to get them knocked off, but we'll see. But again, 
Have a great, great time. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. Let's make this year fucking phenomenal, fucking awesome. And again, first episode of Story Reviews, first review of the year, first movie of the year. And it was good. It was good. So, yeah. To many more. <clears throat> you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And check out more of the content. I'll see you in your nightmares. Peace.